Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter and happy Divine Mercy Sunday as well. Um, as you can see, we have Father Matt back this morning, so we're very excited to welcome him back. Um, please join us after Mass down in the cafeteria. We have about 150 breakfast burritos, so I hope you came hungry this morning. And then our second announcement, we have our Easter lilies around the church up here. Um, if you did donate one, feel free to take it home after Mass today. And without further ado, we'll go ahead and stand and join for our opening song, number 561. Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It is so good to see you, and that my first Mass back with all of you is an Easter Day, Divine Mercy Sunday. It's th thank you uh, for all your prayers and all that you offered me. Um, I was praying for you, and I'm just so glad to be back with you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking forward to worshiping with you again. We also have these wonderful windows all lit up. You know, Easter brings light out of darkness and, and death is conquered by life. So I want to thank Steve Tarina, uh, Steve Mullaney, Carl Kirchma, who have been working on this so that we can see the light coming through and they even matched it to the actual daylight. So God bless them. So brothers and sisters, as we come to this Eucharist, we just... Thank the Lord for his gifts and his light. And for those times when we have preferred darkness to light, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters, that I, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the most Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us offer that prayer that the angels sing, giving glory to God.
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Fight we... for it, all of our kids, uh, ages four through third grade, who are going to hear the word of God at your level. I want to thank you guys for all writing me those cool notes. That was awesome of you. It's good to see you all here today. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. And what you're going to see from Jesus is a special love for his, for his apostles, even when he's scared. And so as you learn about that, I hope you can learn that Jesus wants to come to you even when you're scared. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father in heaven, please bless these, your children, help them to always know the great love that you have for them, and that there's nothing that can keep you from loving them. May they know the presence of Jesus in their life as their Savior and their friend, and may your Holy Spirit come down upon them to help them always think holy thoughts. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, follow your teachers. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Press. 
first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten of God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, 
and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It really is super good to see you. I'm going to preach from here today. Um, I usually preach from the Ambo because that's the privileged place of the proclamation of the Word of God, and the the homily is a continuation of that proclamation, applying it to our life, and usually a bishop would stand apart from that because he has the the charism of teaching in the name of the church, and I am not a bishop, nor do I ever desire to be one. (laughs) Um, Thank you, Bishop Peter and Archbishop Sample. (laughs) Um, But I'd like to stand here today just to be a little bit more familiar, a little bit, um, because I've been gone for three months, and I don't know everything that's going on in your lives, and I want to learn, but I also want to share with you more personal, I'm still going to preach the Word of God, it's not a story about me, but I want to acknowledge that this has happened, so I'm going to stand here today, I hope it doesn't throw you off. So today we ask for the grace to come to know the mercy of the heart of Jesus, Probably all know that it's Divine Mercy Sunday. We probably prayed the chaplet before. We probably have asked for God's mercy. Well, we have every single mass. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. But today we ask for that grace to come to know the mercy of the heart of Jesus for us. Have you ever been in your life where you just kind of missed what was unfolding and it was right in front of your eyes? Like maybe you were looking for something, um, like your glasses, and you're like, where are they? Oh, yeah. It was right there the whole time, but you just missed it. Um, That's kind of where the apostles are at right now. I, I got to watch one of the episodes from season four of The Chosen, and Jesus is talking with a friend, and he's saying, I'm just so frustrated by my students. I have told them three times that I'm going to suffer and die and rise again, and they keep acting like I haven't said anything. It's like they're not even listening. I, I, I'm so angry at the religious leaders because no matter what I say, they continue to focus on the wrong thing. And maybe it happened that way, maybe it didn't, but I was, as I was watching that, I was totally struck. He totally did say three times. I'm going to die, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, and I'm going to rise again. And when it happened, they're like, what? This is crazy. We never saw this coming. Have you ever been, I mean, maybe it's just me. But I was like, he totally must have been frustrated. It's like, how much clearer can I be that I'm going to suffer, die, and rise from the dead? And still you like, are like, you never told us anything. Um, he probably was frustrated. Now, there's many graces that I've experienced on, on my sabbatical, and some of them I want to share with you, and, and some are just for me. Um, I'm definitely not going to go over all of them, 
But I do want to share uh, one in particular today. So quick overview. I, I left here and I, I went on a vacation that I had planned with another priest before I knew I was getting a sabbatical. And I basically slept that week, which was wonderful. Then I went on a retreat, an uh, eight-day retreat in South Dakota. It was negative 45 degrees um, with wind chill. I don't know what it was normal, but it felt negative 45 and then I went to Nebraska and lived with my spiritual director for three weeks. And when they said it was a balmy 23, I was like, I get it. You know? uh, and that was there. So I'm totally not the most intelligent of people of picking places during the winter. Then I got to go on a pilgrimage to Lourdes with my friend and her husband. And they got to, and a, another couple that she wanted to, them to go with. And, um, and got to watch her go into the baths at Lourdes and ask for God's healing and grace. And then um, I got to spend some time in Detroit with the Acts 29 apostolate, three weeks there, and then uh, uh, five days with friends and eight days with family, and then the Triduum at Mount Angel. And so that was, that was my sabbatical. Um, it was such a gift to have the time just to step back and think different thoughts. Such a gift to have the time to step back and think different thoughts. I didn't realize how much I needed to do that. You know, like you're like, I, I'm thinking thoughts. I, I can think thoughts. And then when you take a step back, you're like, I wasn't thinking thoughts. And so thank you for letting me go. I want to thank the Archbishop um, for doing that. I want to thank Sarah Cressy, or Bertrand, uh, uh, for coordinating such wonderful priests for all you guys. Almost every day, you had Monsignor Hunniger, Bishop Peter, or Father Peter, two former pastors and a seminarian that's been here. Man, we couldn't have asked for better, right? Um, and they took good care of you. I'm thank you, thankful for Deacon Brian and stepping up so that we could still have adoration. And for the, yeah. <laughs> And for our leadership team and everyone at the school who, who stepped up and took on extra duties so that everything could continue for you guys. I'm just so grateful uh, for all of that. But the grace I want uh, to share with you is a grace from my retreat. And I remember going in I'm on one of the first days of my retreat um, and my director, um, for, if you've never been on a silent retreat, you... What it is, mine have always been, you go in and you talk to your director, kind of tell them where you're at for the first day, and then they kind of maybe give you some scriptures to pray with. But you, take, you, you sleep, you exercise, um, you do some spiritual reading, um, whatever you're interested in, and then you take four hours, four to five hours of prayer a day at different hours of the day. And then the next day you come back and you check in with your director and say, here's what God was, here's what I noticed, or here's my struggle, and they kind of help you to notice the Lord's voice. So it was one of the first days, and she's like, you need to repent. I'm like, nice to meet you. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh. Okay, what, what, I was listening, you know, it was, it was all good. She was very kind. She's like, you need to repent. You, you have dealt with things in a very worldly way, and you have gotten into this mode of, of self-reliance. And I, 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 I wouldn't have said that before, you know, like, um, and I, like I was praying every day. I was asking God, you know, you've heard of like the surrender prayer, or surrender novena, right? And you maybe heard of ab abandonment to divine providence. That's a, that's a Catholic thing. Um, there, there's the, the self-dedication to Jesus of St. Ignatius. There's all these prayers. You know, there's not one of those prayers like, Jesus, I got this. <laughs> have you been praying that Jesus, I got this prayer? <laughs> Or even Divine Mercy Sunday, Jesus, I trust in you. It's, it's all through our Catholic tradition that we're like, God, I need your help. And not, it's never in our Catholic tradition that's like, I can do this without you. But what had happened um, is we all have experiences of consolation and desolation. And St. Ignatius talks about this, and he's like, that we all experience this, but then the thoughts that come from a consolation or the thoughts that come from a desolation are different than the consolation or desolation themselves. And the evil one can kind of get in there and get us off. And so part of it is good. Like, I, my parents and family raised me to be responsible and hardworking, um, and I, I like to do a good job, and so I do that. But I'm also an American, and I'm also a man, so 
that's a strike, um, into this, like, I've got to figure this out. Something, something comes up, I've got to solve the problem. I, I'm supposed to know the answer. And I know every dude out there is like, yeah, I've, to- I've been there. Um, maybe you're way better at it than me. And, and we've all got our things, but I was getting into this thought that I need to figure out everything by myself. Now, I would never have said I agreed with that thought, but the time just to pray and ask the Lord to show this. And then I was, she gave me... Um, as a, as a scripture one time, the parable of the prodigal son. And so you guys all know that one, right? And it's a, it's a great, it's, I, I love that scripture. I've read books on that. I've preached on that. That was actually my very first homily as a deacon was, was the prodigal son. It's, it's an awesome uh, scripture, and it's always been meaningful to me. But I've never really fully identified with the younger son. And I'm, I'm a sinner, and I've, I've made mistakes, but there's not been a time in my life, because of the grace of my up, upbringing, for the grace of God, there go I, I've, I've never really made this decision. I've always, from like eighth grade on, I've been praying for 15 minutes a day and spending time in Scripture every day. And then, again, my mom would kill me if I did terrible stuff. So, um, and so I was very aware of what was terrible. And I... I didn't want to do that, and I wanted to follow God, and so I was making choices. Definitely a sinner, definitely made a lot of mistakes, Um, but never this time where I was like, you know, God, screw you, I'm going my own way. But as I was praying with it this time, um, I had this grace that I really am the prodigal, I have been the prodigal son, because I was going in my self-reliance is basically saying to God, you know what? you're not very good at taking care of me. So I'm going to take the gifts you've given me, give me my inheritance, and I'm going to go, and I'll figure it out for myself, because I can do better than you. Eh, right? (laughs) Bad error, bro. Um, And uh, so it was this huge grace of being able to name that, to be able to see that, and to be able to repent of that. And when I walked out of that that conversation with my spiritual director and got to go back to prayer, my heart was just filled with a lightness and a peace and like a, a spring in my step. Because what I was believing was not true. And I wasn't giving God the opportunity to give me his mercy. And he saw me, and this is mercy, right? He saw me even when I didn't see myself. Now, you guys all got your stories, right? Um, and uh, I, I encourage you to let God into that for you. But I, while I was gone, I also heard about some rumors. Um, one of the rumors is that Father Matt's not coming back. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> um, another rumor that I heard was that I'm always probably going to leave the priesthood. I was always going to come, come back. I, it was never on the table that I was going to le- leave the priesthood or anything like that. And I get it. Speculation is kind of natural. But you see the thoughts that can kind of come in? And then how we can kind of go down a road and maybe we tell somebody and they're like, oh, that's a fact. And then they're like this. And, and so then I show back up and people are like, where have you been? Where have you been? <laughs> right? And this is what Jesus is doing for the apostles in today's gospel of the divine mercy. They've been in this place where as clear as Jesus could have been, I, I'm going to die and rise from the dead. They're scared. And what's the first thing that he tells them? You guys are such idiots. What's the first thing? that he wants to tell him. said it three times in today's gospel. Peace be with you. Not your idiots, but peace be with you. And then he breathes his spirit on them. Like, I want to give you to be able, the way to think with the Holy Spirit now. Not to go down these thoughts that are, that are erroneous and are gonna lead you away from me, but these thoughts that are gonna lead you deeper into me. Jesus is able to get behind locked doors. He's able to get behind, of course, the door is physically locked, but Thomas's heart in particular, 
is shut. I will not believe until I can go here. And Jesus is the one who came not only in water, but water and in blood, as we heard from the second reading. He's the one that came and said, I am going to go through this so that now you can recognize me. And how did they recognize it was Jesus? Right? There, there's all these appearances that he's made after the, uh, after the resurrection, and they didn't know it was Jesus. They didn't recognize it was Jesus. How did they recognize it, it was Jesus today? Nobody? It was through his wounds. It was through the passion and the suffering that he went through that they're able to recognize, that's really you. You came to, that's what got you behind this locked door. But notice his wounds aren't bleeding anymore. These wounds now are a sign that death didn't win. They're the sign that grace continues more. And this grace can get through locked doors, the locked doors of our hearts, the bad reasoning, the, the stinking thinking that we get into. Jesus says to them, divine mercy is for you. And yeah, Thomas, the first thing I want you to look at is the wounds so that you know it's real. And this is the message for us today. This isn't a story about them back then. This is a word for us today. No longer do I want you to carry the burdens um, uh, of your life and of your faults and of the lies that you've believed, even that death would win over love. I don't want you to believe that anymore. I no longer want you to operate from false reasoning that come from desolating experiences or, or just tough things that you've gone through in your life. But I want you to encounter, experience, and touch through my wounds a love that is stronger than death. Jesus says to them and he says to us, I'm never giving up on you. My heart won't let me. What a great mercy to have. That no matter what we go through, what we've done, what we experience, what we think, even wrongly for a long time, maybe even wrongly on purpose, his heart does not give up on us. And so as we heard Karen proclaim from the first reading today, it said this awesome line, with great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And that's your call today. We're gonna come to this Eucharist, this upper room where the Eucharist happened, and we're gonna see Jesus give us his body and blood. We're gonna come back to this upper room when we're scared and don't know what to do and we, we, we have maybe stinking thinking. We're gonna come to this upper room and he's gonna breathe his Holy Spirit on us like at Pentecost. And then they are changed from that moment out. They go out and they cannot but tell of this love, this mercy, that got behind locked doors with great power. They bore witness to the resurrection of Jesus. So I hope that you will take a risk and be a little bit vulnerable. That you will share some of your experiences with somebody and say, here's how the Lord got to me. Father Matt stinks at self-reliance, but I, my, my, that was not my thing. Here's my thing. But here's how God touched me and my stinking thinking. And maybe it's really only your family that the Lord wants you to get to. Maybe it's your coworkers. Maybe it's somebody else. But he definitely wants you to bear witness to what he's done for you. So we're going to do one thing different today that is ex extraordinary. At the, at the offertory song today, they're going to play a song uh, that really touched me while I was on my retreat that kind of speaks to what I was sharing with you. I didn't have enough time to share with the mu musicians this song and get them time to practice and rehearse it, so we're going to play it audio, which you're really not supposed to do, so sorry. Um, but I would like you to let this, the music has the ability to move our hearts and souls it, it can become a pathway for Jesus to get behind any locked doors. So during the offertory, I invite you to listen. And if you need to close your eyes and not put anything in the offertory, 
We'll deal with that another day. It's more important that the mercy of Jesus gets to stay with each and every one of us. But let that be your prayer. Let that be the mercy of God raining down for you, reaching your stinking thinking, reaching where you thought you were beyond the mercy of God. And let the Father speak through Jesus' redeeming love that shows you who you've always been to him. Brothers and sisters, in this Easter season, we renew our baptismal promises with all faith and boldness. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried? rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, with courage, Let us entrust all of our needs, our prayers, our prayers for the whole world to our Heavenly Father. For the parish for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole church, recalling today the gift of forgiveness that Jesus gave on that first Easter with the breath of his Holy Spirit, that all may come to this fountain of mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That like the first followers of Jesus, the rich may bring their surplus to be distributed according to the needs of those who have nothing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who question and doubt the reality of the risen Christ and who, like Thomas, let their despondency become stubbornness, that Jesus may invite them into his wounds and restore their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and for us all, begotten of God and filled with the faith that conquers the world, that the power of faith may show itself in our obedient love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in a season of suffering, for the loved ones we carry in our hearts, that the joyful power of this Easter may become strength light and healing in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed ones, the Jesus who came through water and the blood of his loving sacrifice on their behalf may bring them rejoicing into heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, Get behind our locked hearts. Send your spirit to help us to think like you do through Christ our Lord. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it. I see it now, I'm laying it down, I know that I need you, I'll run to the Father, fall into grace, I'm done.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. In the Lord, set this sacrifice into your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, 
and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. As Sarah said before Mass, there is a breakfast afterwards. I would love to just get to see you come down. We've got breakfast burritos, there's fruit, I'm sure there's coffee. I also saw overnight oats for those of you who think breakfast burritos are just unhealthy. Um, um, but please come down, share uh, some time together. I'd love just to see you all. Um, and uh, the, the only other thing I'm going to say is I, I know um, that we are at the 930 Mass, and we used to have 830 and 1030, and some people are like, this is great, and some people are like, when are we going back? Um, I just want to let you know that that and many other things, I'm going to be seeking the help of the pastoral council to get everybody's input and the best way to do that. So there's no, going to be no decisions made right quickly, but we're going to start working on it right away um, and see, see what it's best to try and find the values of what makes our community grow and flourish in Jesus Christ and our relationships with one another. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>